I really do think that anybody that comes from any background can get to nine figures if they really wanted to. You don't have to grow into a rich family to become wealthy yourself. You can grow into a poor family or, or a broke family and, and do well yourself and help other people. Hello everyone and welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I'm joined by Moises who comes from California. Welcome Moises. Hi, what's up? Hi, um, how's everybody doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great so far. Everything's been, uh, you know, I had the lows, I had the highs and yeah, so far everything's going good. So I'm excited to be here right now. Yeah, if you're here then it must be going good. <laughs> I saw that you got a nice payout. So can you tell us first a little bit about your background, about yourself and um, what got you into trading? Real quick story. I basically grew up, you know, I was born here in the US, but I grew up in Mexico. And from over there, we grew up poor. So that played a role into where I'm at right now. So I grew up, I didn't have that much money. You know, my family didn't have that much money. So I always knew in life that I wanted to make money. Like I wanted to make money somehow and I didn't care if it was from, you know, uh, drop shipping, you know, trading, doing other things on the side. But I was eventually going to be up there and be successful. So from there, fast forward to right out of high school, that's when really I started my journey because I got into selling basketball cards, selling things on drop shipping, starting my own stories and stuff like that. Although they didn't take off how I wanted them to. The thing that propelled me forward was that um, I learned from that experience and propelled me forward to continue my journey because some people in life, they don't have a risk tolerance. So I think it'll be harder for some people to take on an entrepreneurship journey because their risk tolerance is very low. So I believe that the people that make it are the people that the risk tolerance is much higher than the people that you know, that don't succeed with this sport. And I do believe that entrepreneurship is a sport because we're all here to make money at the end of the day. I carried on for like a year around there. And then I dropped it. I had to go do some other things. Uh, eventually, I was working a couple of jobs here and there too. The main thing was that I wanted to start again. And this time, I was a bit more self-developed because I went through a dark period um, in my lifetime. So between, I, I would guess you would say like two years or one year, I went through a dark period where like nothing seemed to go my way. So after that, I later realized that I was starting to get out by self-developing. So that's when I started my self-developing journey. And from there, I got recruited to an IM, what do you call it? Like the pyramid schemes. I got recruited to IM. I started to learn how to trade through their way of trading. Uh, other people told me, hey, you need to recruit other people to also if you want to make money on the side that way. So I realized that that company was going to fail because it wasn't teaching people how to trade uh, correctly. So I ditched out of that. I was just in it for a year. I ditched out of that. And then I decided that I wanted to go all in onto trading because I figured that trading, it's kind of different from other things. Like you can gain your time back from trading. When I realized like, I can make money from this because I made money with my I am venture, I guess you could say, like I was with them for a while. I knew that this thing was real. So if I can just carry on and somehow, some way I can be successful through learning about people, then eventually I will get to the point where I do become successful myself and I do make a pretty good living. So now we are here where I guess you can say some people call it quick success, but to me, I just think I put in the work behind the scenes to get up here. I think there's no coincidence why somebody who got there a bit earlier than some people, you know, the people tell him, oh, you know, he just got lucky with all these things and he didn't really do it. You know, he had help with other people. I would uh, argue otherwise because I did have, you know, those winning days. But at the end of the day, like I had more losses and I lost a lot of accounts before I got here. You can argue that those failed accounts uh, led me to this place where I am right now. So all that action that I made led me to here right now. If you want to increase the time from point A to point B, then you will need to put more action into that said uh, outcome. So 
if you want to have a better life and, and more results, you need to back that up with action. You can't just do anything, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at right now with uh, with trading. And it's ever since then, I've been making more profitable months and everything's been going pretty good. So I want to ask you, you mentioned about the risk tolerance. Why do you think you have like a bigger risk tolerance than other people? Do you think that this is connected to a life event from childhood? Do you think that it's like, how? why do you think that you can risk more than others? And what are the failures that you cherish the most? You're not necessarily born with that. I, I believe that people that are higher in their risk tolerance or like they take on more risk to, I wouldn't really consider risk. I would consider opportunities because uh, really it is our opportunity. I would just uh, say that the people that consider it risk are people that they wouldn't even bother with this stuff. So the people that honestly get to this type of skill, like where they can keep taking these opportunities is, I believe that they learn this skill from much younger of them doing things throughout their whole life that uh, propelled them to where they are right now. If someone wants to learn this skill, some somebody might say, oh, he learned it overnight. Like it, in reality, it took all the way from way back when they barely began their journey, even if it wasn't necessarily the thing that they're doing right now. They began their journey with another thing, right? That even though they probably don't see it, that probably played a role into what they're doing right now. So if they began their journey with, I don't know, for me, for example, with uh, selling basketball cards or taking the leap with uh, trying to make my job shipping stores, you can argue that that's also a way of learning the skill of just taking more risks, more opportunities. So for me, I think that the people that are talented, like some people might say they're all born traits, like they're all talented at the, what they do. I don't think it's talent. I think that they've been at it for for way too long that it becomes basically like they're talented from the outside in. You believe that they're talented, but in reality, they just put in so much hours, so much effort, so much action that other people might call it talent. And they call it talent because they don't want to look at themselves and see the potential that they also have inside. So like I said, I was with I am and I was trading with them and I lost 10K, uh, $10,000 in one day. And a lot of people would consider that like, like, what are you doing? You know, that helped me to realize that um, I needed to lose that amount to start learning to really get down trading. So like, I needed to lose that 10k for me to open my eyes and be like, okay, <laughs> now I'm, I'm kind of pissed, you know, like, I really want to learn this shit. Some people would back off and be like, you know what, the same for me, like, I just I can't learn it. But that's the exact same reason that you have for you to keep going forward. You already wasted time and energy and, and your money. So <laughs> what do you have to lose at the end of the day? So I think the biggest uh, risk and the biggest failures that you have, it's a blessing in disguise. Later, you're going to realize, looking back at those days, oh, those were the good times. You'll realize that those were the best times. I think nobody's exempt for that. I think everybody uh, experienced somewhere the same failures as some uh, some other person. So if you're experiencing it, I think somebody else is also too at some level. So you just got to keep pushing forward. And with all that self-development that I made and reading books and all this stuff, I, I just had to keep pushing forward. So that's what I would wish to other people, just persist in what you're doing right now because later on it will pay for you to enjoy your fruits of your labor. That was kind of like an eye-opening moment for you. It kind of taught you a lesson. What skills did you have to develop to get where you are today? I think the discipline, the patience, and um, you can say your perspective of the way you view things. The skills that I gained, and a lot of people, would, they would say, that's not really a skill. Like, uh, how is that a skill? To develop discipline and the patience, you will need to incur a lot of things not going your way. So for you to be disciplined, I think uh, you'll later realize the pain of you not being disciplined will translate into your life. So if you want to live a happy life and you want to live a fulfilled life, you'll probably realize you need to be disciplined. You need to be having discipline. And for you to also become a, a consistent trader, you got to have patience for you to let your edge play out and not rush into trade. So for me, I just think the pain of you experiencing where you're not those things is much greater. So they'll push you for you to the next time you incur a moment like that where you can practice patience or discipline 
you'll most likely be able to practice that because of the previous experience you had when you didn't do those things. So that's what I would consider for you to be in this space also to be a professional trader, somebody who's trying to be inspired to be a good trader, they would have to develop those things. So without those things, I don't, you can't consider yourself a consistent trader. You'll just be a gambler. Thing that you realize about this game is that trading is not so much about the information that you keep uh, consuming. I think it's more so about the mindset that you have. And that's why I said patience and discipline, because only you can teach yourself those things. They'll carry you much further throughout your journey than for you just two or three months. Oh, I got technical analysis down, but it's it's all a mindset game. I think the best traders are the ones that they have typically higher EQ than most people. And those are the people that really win in this game because it's all how well could you control your emotion? How well could you be under pressure in this game of trading? And how did you work on getting better? Like, how did you realize that you have to change things? And what were the things that you changed and you did in order to develop into a disciplined and patient person? When somebody is placed in a situation, uh, for example, uh, let's say a millionaire, let's say they lose the whole thing, uh, they go to zero. In a matter of a year, they'll go back to exactly to where they were because they can't be in a situation for too long because the pain is so great that I mean, they're not going to stay there for too long. For me, what helped me was um, realizing that if I don't learn these skills uh, quick, then I will be in deep trouble. And I think uh, somebody who wants to be successful in any endeavor in their life or somebody that their their journey, what they're, they're taking on, I guess you could say the mountain in their life, what they're trying to climb you'll realize that if you don't have these things that it's going to go really uh, bad for you. For me, I just believe that me going through those things, uh, those hard things will eventually pay off. So I just got to go through those difficult things that nobody wants to go through. And I know that there's a reward at the end of the tunnel. So for me, I think there's a higher consequence if you don't do those things. I think there's a higher price that you'll pay later down the road if you don't practice these virtues, I guess you could say that the price you'll pay later will be much greater than the price you pay today. Did you have like a um, daily routine or something that you stick to in order to track your discipline? Or was it just like uh, technical rules that you had? Did you like listen to podcasts, books? Like what helped you to develop the skill? At the end of the day, I think everybody learns differently. For me, what helped me develop the skill was I did have guidance through reading books. If you don't change your behavior and the way you're living life, I think you learn nothing through when you're reading those uh, those books that you consider, you know, from the greatest people. They're like kind of a motivation. Motivation keeps you uh, going, but the discipline keeps you growing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's just so much people that, that I look up to that keep repeating the same things like you need to have discipline in your life you need to have the patience in trading so i think it's a no-brainer for you to start working on those things if somebody who wants to learn these skills you gotta have the composure to be like okay and the self-awareness okay i'm experiencing a, a situation right now where i can freak out or like get angry about this or i can practice patience so later on i can get good at the skill and I can really start developing it from there. If you're not self-aware to, to realize that you need to practice these things for you to be um, great at your craft, I think it's just going to lead to a downward spiral. So going back to my other point, I just think uh, somebody who really wants it is going to find a way to get it. So as long as you keep going with your journey and you keep learning the things that you need to learn, I think it's inevitable for somebody to get up there. And uh, if they do give it their 100%, then I think uh, it's just a matter of time. So what are the things that you wish you did different? So what would you do if you're about to start now? What would you tell to yourself if you're about to start now about the whole this journey? Some people are just driven by different things in life. I think uh, there's a fine line, the pressure that you need to have in life. There's a fine line, there's a thin line, I would say, that uh, too much pressure would uh, lead somebody to, um, to just giving up. There has to be a, a good amount of pressure for you to change. The advice that I would give myself is place yourself in more situations where you would uh, consider them risky. But in, in the long term, like if you just because I view trading risky before I got into this opportunity, I, I view all oh, people make money from trading like is it a gambling thing. But the more I figured out, 
that I could really make money from this. You know, I would, I would start and I would uh, start to learn the craft of trading. My life would consistently be improving as I, I kept learning. So put more time into self-development because I think the, the greatest thing is your mindset. I think the greatest and most beautiful thing is your mindset and the way you view, view life. So start to change your habits and start to read information and consume information that's helpful for you. From you consuming all that content, it's going to start to manifest and you're going to start to become that person. So I could start enjoying the fruits of my labor earlier than most other people. So I knew how to make that sacrifice and I was okay with paying the price. Uh, you said so many great things and I believe that you're going to inspire many people with everything that you said. It's true. Like you lose nothing by trying. The good thing is that this is a skill that you can learn and no one can take it out from you. And at the end of the day, you're going to eat the fruits from the effort that you have put in. Let's talk about a little bit about your trading style and about your strategy, what kind of trader are you tell us a little bit about that part for me i view it as a simple strategy i would consider a, a breakout strategy for me I, i look at the momentum the way the volume's picking up and i trade new york open i'm typically gonna be up and in my time i'm gonna be up in the in the early morning for me to start trading because typically that's when uh and i like to trade pairs like gold GJ and indices, NAS 100 is a, a favorite of mine. So I like to look at the areas where there's going to be high volume because typically those areas that do end up with high volume, they're going to go uh, typically your way and in a matter of minutes because I am a scalper. I do look for that. So it involves a breakout strategy uh, with high volume. I look at the momentum and for me to execute a trade, I particularly look for a candle to break out of the range and to start to analyze, okay, if this candle is going to flip to the upside, for example, if I'm going to get into buys, what are the chances of me having placed that trade and for it to hit my TP? So if the probabilities are in your favor and hey, like the candle formed a wick at the bottom it, and it flipped to go to the upside, there is volume, most likely it's going to keep going up. So there's a high probability that trade will hit my TP and I would typically take those uh, trades because I do track and I do uh, have a trading journal. I do have a high winning percentage taking those trades and they're my playbook. And how do you look at the volume? Uh, do you look at the volume indicator or you measure the volume according to the body or you have like another way of looking at the volume? I typically look at the volume by measuring how much is in the body of a candle. I do uh, look at each Uh, candle the way it's forming because at the end of the day those are just all lagging indicators meaning like if you do have a bunch of indicators in your screen it's typically from the past the way the past candles were forming so for me personally i look at the body of the candles the way they're printing and i'll make a judgment hey um volume is starting to pick up because if volume was low in the market and the areas where I'm typically looking to get in, if there was a bunch of volume and volume was starting to enter, typically those areas, the candles would start printing towards those areas because when there is high volume, typically you're going to see like a massive move to the upside or a massive move to the downside. So I do use the five minute and the 15 minute. I like to be in and out real quick. For me, my personality, the way I like to trade is fast pace. So I'll typically just get in, get out and have my fixed RR, let the trade hit my TP and, and that'll be, I'll call it a day. Whatever the outcome is, is I'm fine with that. Did you like um, try different styles of trading or have you been scalping like from the beginning? I did run up a lot of strategies and a lot of people in YouTube that was just consuming free content from there, but I also bought some people's courses The more things that you try out, I think uh, later you're going to find out your the type of style, the type of um, trader that you are. So I realized that I think a scalping was the best style for me because of my personality. I like to get in and get out real quick. So I would prefer a scalping strategy over the swinging because typically a person who's uh, more impatient, I guess you can say, uh, even though that's viewed like a negative trait to some people, I'll consider that self-awareness because you're going in and you're analyzing yourself and you know what's best for you instead of you just hyping yourself up to try to learn a strategy. If you're trying to learn a strategy because you look up to a person and you're like, I want to be like him, 
I think uh, you'll get nowhere because it doesn't suit you and it doesn't suit the way that best works for you. Now I'm here with this strategy and I've so far, um, I'm liking it so far. What was the best experience that you had? Like the best trade or the best uh, feeling that trading gave to you? Where I was running low on, on my bank account. I was going to college and the weird thing is that uh, a lot of people would think that I was taking money from my own pocket to pay for this college tuition. But that wasn't the case. I always knew at the back of my head, college really isn't going to give you a life that you want because college is only going to land you a job. Like at the end of the day with your degree, you're only going to have a job. So, And uh, I didn't really take it too serious. So for me, knowing that information from a young age, I was like, okay, if I know college ain't going to be the way I want to go, it ain't going to get me the life that I want. Okay, so... I need to take a different approach. And my parents, obviously, growing up as an immigrant coming into this country, they wanted me to graduate from college so badly. So basically, I had the whole thing paid off for uh, somehow. I just landed some scholarships, some uh, more financial aid from other groups that offered me financial aid because I had so much coming in. I had a check from the mail that was, I believe it was close to $3,000. I put that directly into, I went to um, deposit that uh, quickly into my bank account. From there, okay, I was like, I'm going to give this another shot. And if I don't succeed, then I'm going back to my job where I was working at previously. And my uncle was going to offer me a job and I'm going to have to start working there. And like, I really hated it so much. So I needed to, <laughs> I needed to make this work. And so I had no other option. I was like, my back was against the wall. I was like, okay, so I'll make this work or I'm going back. And I hated that job so much that I didn't want to go back. The first one I found out was um, FTMO from Lambo Raul because I was on YouTube. I was searching. I found Mamba Effects and then in my recommended Lambo Raul popped up and I was like, who is this guy? And it said withdraw from FTMO this amount. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, like, how is this guy like withdrawing this amount of money? from what he's saying like he gets capital from this company it, life is all about taking a risk like a calculated risk so if i do have my probabilities on my side and i do like i said develop that risk tolerance i'm like okay what do i have to lose really in this situation i did pass an account and i blew it again because i i basically didn't follow the proper risk management it was six months down the journey so I load up another one and, and keep in mind, I was my funds were running really low at that point. It was my last shot that I can give it. And I had, I remember I had a 50K and a 25K and I both had these accounts and I passed both of them because I was taking the same trades on both. I had two phones, I was taking trades on both. From there, I did pass them and I had a 17K withdrawal from there. And I was like, this works. And although some people would consider that, hey, like you risk too much on those accounts, like you can't keep them from long term. For me, I just I was still kind of new to the journey and I didn't really know too much of what I should do and what I shouldn't do. But thankfully, it, it paid off and I did take the risk of potentially losing that account when I funded everything. And so when I got that 17K withdraw and it hit my bank account and it, the number went from a couple hundred to 17k i was like okay <laughs> now we have a lot of room to play isn't it <laughs> this thing works and i'm like okay so from there it's just my parents don't even believe that this is real money and so from there i was just hooked on to getting more and more and eventually i did lead up and running close to six figures now in under two years six figure close close to a six figure funded trader it all started from there. That was like the best feeling I, I had. Like nothing compares to that because I made money online. I was like, this is real. Like, this is real money. From there, I just stuck with trading. I'm like, there's no way I'm going back. Such a cool story. That's amazing. It's just so interesting to hear how everything can just change. In, in how long period was like all that? When I got the first witch, I was in summer last year in 2022, around um, April was when I had that withdrawal come in. So so this was my journey. I got into IM, like I told you, that was the, the start, the catalyst to get into trading. IM continued for a year, around a year. So I got into IM around 2020 during um, August, and I carried that all the way through uh, 2021 of September. 
but I was trading a different style and a different broker and, and it wasn't regular the regular forex that you guys trade on right now it's uh it was like if anybody knows i think somebody might know it it was binary options but like it was just a, a different way of trading around what seven months six months and i got that withdrawal it wouldn't be luck because i did have a lot of failures along the way some people might call it lucky like you looked at the right video at the right time you got in that at the right time during summer of 2022 when when uh everything was like going good for forex pairs but I would consider that probability. I wouldn't consider that luck. I would I would say like I measured my the way I was looking at things and somebody would have gave up if somebody had that blown account, like I said, but I kept going. So it all happened in the span of six months, really, because um that was when I really took trading seriously, was when I quit I am and was when I went all in onto trading. So it's lucky if you receive only one payout and that's it and you don't receive more payouts but you're definitely showing that it's not about luck from there so i did blow more obviously i blew that account because i was risking way too much and i did not learn the nature of and i did end up receiving i think it was six withdrawals my highest paid one was 22k and i had two accounts of 200k so you can run up uh, the math and i did make 40k and so around june of that year, I had uh, two 200k accounts because I used the funds from the other ones. And I basically had the biggest payout around that time. I kept going and you'll see a whole bunch of blown accounts from FTMO and, and the funded trader and people can get there. It's just a matter of the type of action you put and how much you really want to dedicate yourself into learning this craft. I realized that I had nothing to lose at that point. Nobody from my town where I grew up like they haven't seen the way I pulled out that type of money. They don't think that's possible. And I want to prove to people wrong that this thing can be possible for other people like that. So so you kind of like had the vision. So you had the vision. You could like visualize yourself successful. This was an opportunity with firms. I knew that uh, only the strong people would just survive in this. And, and that's why they call it the 1% the 99 So. I, I want to live in the 1%. I don't want to... <laughs> so what is your plan moving forward? Where do you see yourself in 5-10 years with trading and in general in life? Where I see myself is becoming a full-time professional trader. And really, I always had that vision of me starting to manage one mil of my own personal capital. So I'm not going to stop there. Obviously, I want to scale up because I do have the visions. Like there's more posters that you don't see right now because... Um, I'm facing the other side, but you don't see them right now. But if I were to turn this camera over, you'll see that there's so much more of those posters that you see from that one. And they're all my visions. You'll see that I, exactly some of them might cross off the goals that I had. And keep in mind, I made these posters like in 2021. And I had these since 2023 that were in right now in May. It's crazy to me because some of the goals I wrote down in a piece of paper and I wrote down, I believe it was like around 100 goals that I want to complete or 200. And I remember somebody saying, write down your vision board. And it's so crazy how quick you can start crossing things off in your goals list. And so for me, like that's my vision board. And that's where I start seeing myself. I already made up the future, like I already have the life I want to live. So for me, I just want to gain more capital, 10 million, like eight figures. For me, the exact number that I'll be, my goal crossed off would be 100 million. I'm not too sure how I'm going to get there. But for me, I think 100 million is a very possible goal. And I believe that I can achieve it even when I'm young in my, my late 20s or my early 30s, but, and I'm still young right now at the age of 22, and I completed this in a short amount of time. So just imagine where I'm down in the future this much. So for me, it was 10 million at first, my goal, but then I was like, I want to keep stretching it. So you know what, we're going to aim for higher. For me, making nine figures a year would be like the ultimate goal crossed down with my financial situation. So Anything above nine is just whatever, because at some point you just get through a number where it's just your life stays the same. So um, for me, nine figures is exactly where I want to be because I can help people around my community or like my parents, my friends, my family, stuff around that nature. But um, that's exactly where I see myself with my financial situation is starting to gain more capital with trading, uh, trade more accounts 
that's my financial stuff that I want to complete. But also I want to have my health in check. So I'm just going to keep uh, keep going to the gym because I've already been going through to the gym for a while. So I'm just going to keep my health and keep maintaining where I'm at right now. I want to get there because I want to show people it's possible that you can grow up broke and poor and you can get there if you do have the right skills and you gain the right knowledge and guidance. And I believe that anything is possible to get to nine figures. I think now when you're crossing that billion, I think that's when it requires you to to start to look into other things. But I really do think that anybody that comes from any background can get to nine figures if they really wanted to. And I want to make a point clear, like, you don't have to grow into a rich family to become well for yourself. You can grow into a poor family or, or a broke family and, and do well yourself and help other people. So that's the goal for me. And I did not know exactly how I was going to do it. It could have been through some other thing like drop shipping or like it could have been through me selling my fitness courses because I do have two Instagram accounts. I have another one for my fitness. I feel like to get to that number, you're going to get into other things like real estate, like um, uh, you're going to get into other ventures to get to that nine figure mark. But I was studying some other guy who grew up with absolutely nothing. And he said that because I grew up with nothing, I just want to have money in my life. But that was kind of like a similar situation to me. I just, I was like, now I can have all these things that I want because money ain't an issue anymore. If you're going to have a, I don't know, like you want to have a wife and kids or stuff like that, you got to take care of them. So like, I don't think that um, somebody from my situation where because my parents slacked off when they were young, right? And they had me, I don't want my, my kids to go through that same situation. So that's why I'm also doing it. Overall, it's just um, a whole game in life. I just like that type of game because it goes on forever until you're you're done, right? Like until um, you, you die basically because uh, in sports and basketball, let's say, you can't uh, keep going forever because eventually there comes a point where you retire you know, in your 30, late 30s, 40s, around there. Entrepreneurship just keeps going and going and going and going, and you can just run it up. So you continue to be in the game of entrepreneurship, and it's a beautiful thing to to level up in. You get to keep playing every single day for somebody who loves the game of entrepreneurs and and uh, they want to keep uh, improving. To me, I, I find it fun, this type of stuff where it's challenging and, and you're losing money, but you make it back up again. And that's where I see myself in 10 years is just continue entrepreneurship and just leveling up at my health. How was the reaction of your parents when you like started showing the results? My parents reacting to that type of situation where I was just losing money and stuff like that. I treated them as like they were kind of against me, but like uh, really all they wanted was a safe future to go on and uh, just live my life. I keep looking up to my mentors and I I keep having these thoughts of like, really in society, like what is safety? Like what you consider safety? I think safety is a um, mechanism. It's a psyop for people that don't really want to take risks because really what's the risk in life if you're going to continue with your same job and stuff like that? Like um, obviously like, like any parent wants their kid, right? They're going to encourage you to do the normal things that every, every parent wants you to do. So when they hear about you losing money, they want to protect you from that. But I think the people that love you the most in life are the people that protect you from your downfalls the most. It's just the deprogramming that they have in their minds that they think that this is not possible for somebody who's very young and seeing how much money I blew. And like, it's just crazy to them because they never would have thought, why is my kid going into this and he's blowing money left and right? Like, does he not get it? Like, you shouldn't be blowing your money like this, but they don't, they're not going to understand you because they, they have just the deprogramming. So I think society conditioned people to lose. And if you really think about it, that's why the 99% and the 1% is made up because society has conditioned people through so much things like social media from even going to college, as crazy as it sounds like going to college is a, all a business if you think about it. And it's just there to make you lose because all they want is people to rely on them. And from there, you just get a job and you're back at the bottom. You're trying to pay off your debt or something like that. But um, you have to reprogram your mind and you have to think about it from a different perspective. The word uh, safety, like I mentioned, 
it's really a word that uh, I guess you could say the people at the top use to convince the people at the bottom that they need to be safe. And so they never really take risk and they never really do things in their life that they're proud of. So they're going to be complacent. They're going to be telling you, oh, don't do that because you want to play it safe. I guess that's a deep programming that people have. So if you're going to get into entrepreneurship, get into trading, stuff like that, a business, they're always going to tell you that you want to play the safe route. You don't want to do this risky thing because you might lose money or whatever, but they don't know that deep down, like there's been other people that done it and you can do it too if you really are about it because nobody is as smart as me or you. Everybody's the same out here. They're not smarter than any of us. All they did is they probably failed more than you and I have. Like nobody gets here accidentally. So I'm going to limit my time with my parents. And that's another way to combat that. It's just limiting your time with people who don't want the best for you. Any last words that you would like to share with us? You need to change your decisions if you want a different life. You can't live a life with the same decision. So the same way you're acting, the same way you're thinking, expecting a different life in that adversity or failure, you realize that you'll find your higher self through that adversity. And I think somebody who doesn't go through as much adversity as somebody who does is I think that's an advantage because you gain so much more lessons along the way. So uh, last thing I would say is uh, keep monitoring the way you're thinking and like the way your thoughts are every single day. Because even though as little as this thing is of me just saying, oh, monitor your thoughts, but you think like it's something very little, but really a place of a bigger picture, because if you're thinking positively, you're going to gain positive results. And if you're thinking negatively, you're going to gain negative results. So think positively about yourself because it's very easy to think negatively. And You shared so much value. I believe that so many people are going to get inspired and motivated. You're going to open lots of eyes. It's been an amazing interview. So thank you so much for your time and for sharing your experience with us. I look forward to see all your journey and I hope to have a follow-up interview in the near future to check how everything is going. <laughs> Share my story. So I'm very grateful for that experience. So uh, thank you again. And for everybody watching, I, I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure to host you. <laughs> to all of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell and show us some love in the comments down below. Trade safe and until next time.